Mazda strives to give all of their cars common family traits, efficient, fun to drive, and feeling somewhat upscale. That even applies to their CX-9 three-row family hauler. Redesigned from the ground up, it looks long, low, and sleek. It's not trying to be some minivan disguised as a rugged off-roader. In recent years, Mazda's been building relatively lightweight cars. They cut nearly 300 pounds from the portly previous CX-9. Some of those weight savings came from moving from a six-cylinder to a 2.5-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Now, Mazda has multiple reasons for that move. Not only does the smaller, lighter engine sync with the company's philosophy, they also really didn't have any other choice. Mazda is a small company with limited economic resources, and they don't have a homegrown V6 in their stable. Buyers who choose cars based on their numbers might be scared away by the CX-9. After all, it only makes 227 horsepower on regular fuel. Feeding the CX-9 Premium fuel bumps horsepower to 250, but that added power comes only at high engine RPM where few people drive. Save the money at the pump and run regular gas. But the number that really matters is the CX-9's 310 pound-feet of torque. That's the satisfying, shoving your back feeling you get when you push down the go pedal, and the Mazda clearly out-torques its rivals. It does not struggle in everyday driving. Now maybe the CX-9 six-speed automatic looks outmatched compared to the eight and nine speeds out there, but all that torque keeps the transmission from having to downshift all the time, and that makes it more relaxed to drive. Folks who tow a trailer might be disappointed by the CX-9's 3,500 pound tow capacity. After all, the Honda Pilot, Toyota Highlander, and Kia Sorento, they can all tow 5,000. But if you enjoy driving down a twisty road, none of those competitors handle like this. Most mid-size SUVs are nothing special to drive. Instead, Mazda wants to be the affordable BMW. Piloting the CX-9 is a joy, making it a viable alternative for buyers who want a BMW X5 or Audi Q7, but don't have 65 grand. Now, luxury cars like that are typically quiet, but traditionally, well, Mazda's been really loud, but the company has finally discovered noise insulation putting lots of it in the floor, as well as double-paned windshield and front side window glass. Combine the hushed cabin with the engine's bountiful torque and the button-down handling, and you have something that really hides speed pretty well. You'll be happy that the optional heads-up display shows the speed limit, too. Inside, the CX-9 feels more upscale than a Pilot or Highlander. Top trim signature versions have real chunks of wood and exclusive brown leather, but even lesser CX-9s are pretty spiffy. Space-wise, the CX-9 gets the job done, but the Pilot or Highlander have more room. The Mazda sleek lines cut into cargo volume in the back, and its third row seat is for kids only. The biggest shortcomings are up front. The driving position is rather narrow for what's a rather big car. Your right leg hits against the center console, at least that's padded. The left footrest is pushed too close, and you can't pull the wheel out far enough. Looking for a great infotainment system? Shop elsewhere. Mazda Connect looks like a budget version of BMW's iDrive, complete with a console controller knob. But here, many basic functions take way too many steps, and the system can be frustratingly slow, especially on startup. The CX-9 comes pretty well equipped. All have LED headlights and a backup camera. Mid-level touring models come with leather and blind spot monitoring, adding navigation, and low-speed smart city automatic emergency braking brings the price to $40,470. Top-level Grand Touring and Signature trims come with more standard advanced safety equipment, including Ford Collision Warning. About half of all 6.9s will have this equipment, which is great, but we do wish it was standard, or at least optional, on all trims. A fully loaded Signature trim, complete with the fancy interior and LED light piping around the front grille, costs $45,215. That's not bad, but it feels like Mazda focused their limited resources on driving dynamics and missed a few details in the process. Basic front seat adjustments proved to be strangely limited, making it hard to find a comfortable position. There's also no surround view system, no Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto, things that you expect from a brand new clean sheet design nowadays. Overall though, for someone looking for an affordable mid-sized SUV that's actually fun to drive, 6.9 is really the only game in town. For more on SUVs, check out consumerreports.org.